I just wanted to start off with, you know, your superhero secret origin. Um, you know, it's a pretty famous story, but you got a toy guitar when you were five. Mm -hmm. And you started writing songs basically immediately. They may not have had, you know, a traditional song structure. <laughs> that, that came a little bit later on. But your parents saw the passion pretty quickly. Yeah, totally. And uh, they got you a little bit better guitar in, what, a, about a week? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't take very long of me playing that very... It was one of those really not tunable guitars that you get like at toy places um so it sounded really bad so i think they got annoyed with it a little bit yeah they wanted to get me something that was at least in tune so do you ever wonder about that how you know you your your path whether you always completely knew it or not seemed pretty set pretty early on yeah i don't know i mean i just kind of always wanted to do music but i didn't always know that i was going to do it as a career so it never felt like something I was, like, pushed into at all. Um, it was always just something that I wanted to do. And so you end up, you know, taking lessons from a pretty early age, and writing was almost always a part of who you were as well. Mm hmm yeah. And even though you wrote a lot, you weren't always that into sharing what you wrote. No, for a long time I didn't share it with anyone, really. And then eventually I shared it with some of my close friends, but I wasn't posting it on the Internet or anything like that until I was in college. So, like, you were in high school and you were sort of hanging out with, in quotes, the Nashville punk scene? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did go to a lot of punk shows at the end of high school. Um, so I knew a lot of musicians, um, and I just I didn't really want to share my music. Right. So when you started to try and put some of these things down... You were actually singing into your phone. Yeah, that's the way I first recorded stuff was by using my phone as a mic, basically micing my amp with my cell phone and doing vocals straight into my cell phone mic and just like mixing it on GarageBand so it sounded a little better. Yeah. Well, we we're really excited to have you in the studio and we'd love to hear some music if we could. Awesome. Yeah, we'd love to play some. Space. 
Soccer Mommy, our guest in the studio today. And there is a sold-out show tonight at the Record Bar. The new album is clean. I'm sure that they'll have it tonight at the merch table for you. Um, so after high school, you got a task cam. And I, I don't know the exact model, but I'm assuming it was for multi-tracking. Mm -hmm. But you're still limited to like an internal mic. Yes, um, I eventually bought a mic, but when I first started, it was pretty much just the internal mic and the inputs that I used. Yeah, so you started turning a, a little bit more serious eye to, like, getting some of this stuff down. Yeah, I, I had to work a lot to make stuff sound good, uh, even, like, sound okay, just because it was, um, you know, I had such limited recording options. Um, but over time, I kind of learned how to make it work for my sound and make something out of it. So you moved to New York City and uh, started going to NYU, uh, and it, it sounds like that first year at NYU, you spent a good healthy chunk of it in your dorm room. Yeah, I spent a lot of time recording, a lot. Um, it, was, it was partially just, you know, moving to college and kind of having a lot of new experiences and being kind of scared of it, and also partially just, I was getting really into recording, and... Um, I just wanted to write all the time and put stuff up on Bandcamp, so I did a lot of that. You know, it and it seems like a lot of that was just soul searching mm -hmm. that went into that writing. Like all of your songs seem to be pretty much about who you are and where you're at. Yeah. You know, the funny thing to me is that sense of, you know, your reluctance to put that out there. Um, one of your songs, um, Scorpio Rising, mm -hmm. it is about you know feeling like you you know, w wants to be more open in the in a relationship and, you know, putting that music out there. But boy, when you write a song, it's all there. Yeah. If, it, if it was any more personal, there would be like names and phone numbers yeah. in the lyrics. Uh, it seems like a pretty interesting dichotomy. Yeah, I think that's just kind of where I channel it all. So... Um, you're in school at NYU. You decide to go into music business. Mm -hmm. um, and you're in these classes, and you're texting your agent. Yeah. <laughs> I, spent a, I spent a lot of time in my classes doing work for my own music stuff um, just because I was distracted by it a lot. Um, I think even then I knew that was what I really wanted to be doing. Uh, so trying to do, like, schoolwork, especially related to similar things it made me just want to do the actual work I was doing outside of class. You know, it seems, I'm sure it felt pretty organic to you, but for people who are listening to this interview, going from recording stuff in your bedroom at home and then like starting to put stuff on Bandcamp and SoundCloud and then like within about a year, you know, you are... You've got a booking agent. You've got a record label contra uh, contract. I mean, it's kind of insane how quickly it mm -hmm. went for you based off of people finding you on this site. Yeah, no, I mean, it really is crazy. It felt like a whirlwind when it happened, too. Um, even just, you know, first getting contacted by any labels at all was really cool. Uh, and I still didn't realize that it meant I would be doing this. Uh, I thought I would be in school, like, just having someone release my records that I was putting on Bandcamp in a, you know, on vinyl. I thought that was pretty much all that was going to be happening, <laughs> putting it on Spotify. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's totally, everything's different now. It all changed very fast. So when you realized you had a career, you stepped away from a scholarship at, at NYU. Was that at all hard or was that pretty easy? It was a pretty easy decision to leave. I didn't really want to be there. Yeah. That was as simple as that. It, was it hard for your parents? No, they were really supportive. That's very cool. Weirdly enough. I guess they didn't have to pay for the school anymore. <laughs> That's probably it. We'd love to hear another song if we could. Awesome. We're going to play a song called Cool.
Soccer Mommy in our studios today here at The Bridge, the new album. That's actually been out almost a year. We're about a week shy of its release uh, being a year old clean, which has uh, been released on Fat Possum. So you, um, you dropped out of school, moved back to Nashville, formed a band. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, you had done so much music on Bandcamp and SoundCloud that there were all these great songs out there. But with the band, you sort of cherry-picked and put together a new collection of those songs sort of reinterpreted for the full band. Yes. And then, you know, the thing that I love, though, is when you went to record your proper full-length debut, uh, you worked with Gabe Wax, who's worked with a lot of really great people. And your instruction for to him was you told him that you wanted it to sound like sitting in a field in the south in the summer at night. And this did not phase him. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> It was very nice that it did it. I didn't have anything else to really describe it. Um, but he he really nailed it, I think. He ended up being uh, feeling more like a, a collaborator than a boss. Mm-hmm, totally. So, um, you know, one of the interesting things to me about your songwriting is that for somebody who writes such compelling lyrics, music comes first. But not just that, you start with the chorus. Uh, it's most of the time I start with the chorus, but I usually start with the like guitar chords first um, and kind of build everything around that. Yeah. So uh, after the success of the first album, you started to do some some covers. Um, we've had a lot of fun playing your Dixie Chicks cover. Oh, awesome. I How did you come like to that? that? Uh, I love the Dixie Chicks. Um, I don't know. I was listening to them a lot, and that one is just kind of like one of the big hit ones. It's in my key. <laughs> all worked out. <laughs> You've covered Springsteen's I'm on Fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming that there's a, another record in the works at some point. Yes, at some point. Mm. I can't I can't spill the details, but ah. but uh, I do have a record written, so Very hopefully cool. soon. Well, we're really looking forward to it, and I know the show is sold out tonight, so you're going to have to uh, come back and play another show to satisfy yeah, all the totally. people that can't get in tonight. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear one more song if we could. Awesome. This one's called Wildflowers. Wildflowers don't grow in the city. Our heart turns gray and shriveled now.
Soccer Mommy. Live in the Bridge Studios today. That was lovely. Thank that was you. great. Do you want to introduce members of band real quick? Yes, I do. Over playing keys and guitar, we have Rodrigo Avendano. Playing lead guitar is Julian Powell. On the drums is Ryan Elwell. And on bass is Graham Getz. And you are Sophie Allison. And I'm Sophie Allison, yes. Uh, sold out show tonight. Congratulations. Can't wait for the new music. Thank you. So lovely to have you in early in your career, and we hope that this isn't the last time you come in yeah, and join us. And we know it's a sacrifice to come in and do this on a day when you're playing another show. No worries. Uh, we know you're really up against it trying to get in and get <laughs> set up for the show, so we'll let you go. But thanks so much for coming in and sharing yourself with us today on the bridge. Yeah, thanks for having us. Soccer Mommy live on the bridge.